Well, hello, and welcome to Galloway's Most Wanted presents the Runcible Report. I'm Ross Aiken. I'm Jeff. And with us today is Paul Cook, and Paul is here uh, with a new charity project, and I'm going to let Paul introduce himself and tell us about the project. Hey, Paul. Hello. Nice to be here. Thanks for having me. Um, yeah, a few years ago, I um, I want I've been trying to persuade somebody to uh, do a Zygons as they were leaving their planet. We knew that the planet had been destroyed, and it always seemed to me that it would be a, a really good idea to do sort of like Zygons, but Battlestar Galactica. And so that that's the really simple premise of the book. Um, obviously, there's a, there's an antagonist that's there, but they don't know this at the start. Um, and I, I thought Zygons are really popular. Um, the creator of them, Robert Banks Stewart, he died from cancer. And everybody knows somebody who's either had cancer, died from cancer, survived cancer. And it just seemed like a, a really good thing to do to get it together and raise some money for Cancer Research UK. So that that's where the thing came from. I, like I said, we're trying to persuade this chap to um, do the book because I'm burn idle and I didn't want to do it myself. But um, <laughs> he just turned around to me and he, he said, if you want it, do it. And there, there was um, a couple of famous people there at this convention and I approached them and one of them said yes and that was Paul Mars he did write a, a story for it but it, it turned out too long but the very fact his name were attached to it meant that I could approach other people and they would see that I was serious and it wasn't just mm -hmm. a flash in the pan it's taken quite a long time to come to fruition but yeah that, that's basically how it started and you have, you have you have pulled in a lot uh, of very oh my God. renowned people in in the Doctor Who world t to get on board with this. I mean, this isn't this isn't some half measures kind of oh, no, quick thing. No. The, the the time, effort, and the work that you put into pulling people onto this project, it's astounding. <laughs> Well, the, the thing that... Oh, it, it amazed me when I saw the names as I was... Paul was kind enough to send us uh, a proof of it, basically. Yeah. And uh, it's it's going to... You're going to get your people... If you buy it, you're going to get your money's worth because it's jam-packed. We were talking a little beforehand, but the list of people you have got, it, it blew my mind. Well, uh, um, unlike a lot of the other charity um, books that have come out, I, I wanted a certain level of quality in it. That sounds really really high polluting doesn't it but i wanted a certain level and i didn't want to open it up to just anybody sending stuff in because one i'd have had hundreds of hundreds of things to read yeah. and two I'd, i sort of wanted people that i knew their style and what they could do so uh it, it were all invite only <laughs> so yeah I mean, you've kept this under wraps for a long time. Yeah, how long? Literally, how long have you been working on well, this? Well, uh, one of the one of my friends who's illustrated the story, she got in touch and said, "I've just had this flash up. It's four years today that I drew this picture, so <laughs> it's four years." <sighs> but I mean, some of that is my fault, and other other parts is you're asking people to work for free you've got to wait till they can fit it in around their schedule so you can you can't force yeah. people so, i mean worth the wait though Definitely oh well the, the good thing about it is um as pieces have been trickling in there's there'll be something that somebody's come up with in one story that's like oh wow that'll fit really well with this one and so it's all started interlinking um, it makes it look as though it were all part of the idea from the start. But, it, you know, it's just everybody, literally everybody has brought something to to the book that's added to it. There is a consistency throughout it, I've noticed. I mean, I, I haven't read it all yet um, because it's a lot. It's a yeah. lot of high quality <laughs> content and you want to take your time with it. You want... Yeah. 
to sit back and enjoy it. Um, yeah. But what what you do pick up very quickly is is that this is all one big epic story that's yeah. going on. Yeah, that's what got me. I I got about a quarter of the way through, and I have you know, folks, I've got a comic podcast, and I'm reading like twenty different things at one time. But I read like the first four <laughs> things. But uh, no, I uh, I agree. It, it, it that's what I liked when I started reading it. That it was all interconnected. Um, for American listeners, there's something unique about the British ah. annual. Yeah, that's what I liked about it. It was all interconnected. It is very tensely written, and th- I mean that in a good way. That it's not just fluff. It's not all these little cute one and dones. That you've got this theme. And you're following the journey. I like that a great deal. Well, what I, and, one um, of the things that I, I did before I started asking people is I I thought about how this would work. And, you know, one of the things, I love Zygons. I've listened to everything that they're in. I've seen everything they're in. Um, I've made, I don't know how many, dozen. But um, the... I don't like, much as I love Big Finish, I don't like the idea that they had where the Zygons rode into war suckling from a scarrison. Um, if you've got a massive fleet in space that's exodus in the home world, you can't possibly have enough scarrison to feed an entire population. It's just, it's not logistically possible really and so i i thought how how could we get around that and then i I thought well the only zygons we've seen really from the original episode that's the other thing it's only from 1976 it's not nothing since um i thought you know how, how could we get around that well we've only seen soldiers so maybe it's just the military that has that and then all of a sudden you've got a full population that's not reliant on this Zygon milk. But would there be any side effects? So it becomes addictive. And so once they've had this, they get stronger bodies, it develops the mind, but they're then reliant on it. So then you get these other things, which are the the shock troops, which they withdraw that milk and they go into... um, withdrawal and they just turn into this frenzied army of killers so <clears throat> there were certain ground rules that i put down to start off with three different strands in the book so there's an old um like tales of brocklin which is the hero that helped them when zygons were in their infancy and then we get to the present day and then there's the other one where you've got this mysterious force working against them, but they don't know who it is. And they've got sleeper agents and things like that. So mm. th- there are three strands to the book that also uh, work towards the conclusion. Yeah, I think that's a good idea, because I, as I was saying, it, for our American listeners, the, the, the British annuals are unique and i, I guess it's, it's european other europeans country have it because ours are it's comic books have annuals but there isn't this thing with tv shows um we just didn't have that and it's so true to that form but a little bit more does that make sense yeah. and that's what i liked about it the artwork is gorgeous yeah uh, i will compliment you you're you're the way the layout of all the pages and everything it is so true to that that the the Say the template yeah. for the British annual, yeah. but you know they're never this well written. Well, <laughs> but they're also you know they're also ge- geared for kids. Yeah. I mean they are geared for children. Yeah, this. I do like the Duke of For uh, Forgill uh, game too. In oh, there. that's oh, um, that's that's um. I don't know whether you've seen him on Twitter, Andy Drews. He he does a lot. Yeah, I know. I yeah, he's fabulous. Yeah, yeah, I bought some of it when he had some prints a while back. I bought some. yeah. Because I love I love his stuff. Yeah. Uh, he had the weed. He did some uh, Weedabix. Yeah. Mock-ups. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, no, I love his stuff. His, his sense um, of humor is just amazing. <laughs> so when it when is this being released, Paul? Do you have a date for it to come out, or is we, he, I mean, there's stages to getting any project done. Yeah, I understand well, that. Um, it, what is it today? The fourth, fourth of April. So I'm hoping. 
it's going to be out by the end of next week. Wow. Yeah. So whatever day. That's great. Yeah. I've 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 sent the link out for contributors to get their copy. Um, I want to wait till they've got theirs so they can look at it and then I'll open it up. Um, and I've I've got to change the account so that there's some charity money added on top of that. And then, um, yeah, it'll all go live as soon as I've done that. Very cool. Four years hard work. Um, on and off, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> In between yeah, all yeah. of the other hard work. <laughs> well, yeah, the, one, of the, one of the problems that I had with it is I'd, I'd laid it all out and then Lulu went and changed the template. And so every page I'd done didn't fit. And when you when you change your page to fit the new template, it changed all the the lettering, everything. And you ended up with... One of the things about the annuals is that every story finished at the end of a page. And you'd end up with some going two paragraphs onto the next page. And you ended up having to basically relay it all out again. So... I, I, I tell you, it took me hours to stop laughing when I realised that had happened. <laughs> oh, good God! Oh my God! Yeah. Um. Um. I'm I'm actually scrolling through because Jeff has contributed something to this <coughs> project, and Jeff, you had kind of dropped hints that you were working on something to me, but never anything what it was. I was sworn I think secrecy kind of... by Paul, you say. I have understood. Paul, has, I'm, Paul I'm has had us under very strict instructions on pain of death to stay shtum. Um, do you, do you so know why that was? State. That's because what? every time anything like this is coming out, if anybody knows about it, you get you get a message sort of five, six times a week asking, is it ready yet? Is it ready yet? Yeah. And that oh that would God. have been more pressure for me. So I just yeah. I wanted to enjoy doing it, and um, I just the the less people know about it, the less I'm going to get that. Is it ready yet? Is it ready yet? Is it ready yet? Yeah. I I think that is a very good plan. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I, you know, it's completely. Because there's nothing worse than a deadline. No. There's nothing worse than a deadline. Um, especially where Doctor Who fans especially, are bloody <laughs> Oh God, any fan, any fan, don't you know? They're not. I, I'm a comic fan. I'm a Star Trek fan. I'm a Who fan. It's 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 the constant. They're ne- there's always somebody who's not happy. Or you're going to get the thing. It's like, well, you're doing it wrong. Yeah. <laughs> oh. You're not doing it the way someone else would oh, do yeah, it. Oh yeah, I've already had a couple of uh, comments about the cheesy title, and I'm like, it's meant to be cheesy, so. <laughs> It's the whole, the whole thing is it's meant to be cheesy. They they were cheesy. I mean, one of the one of the things that this is based on is obviously the Dalek Outer Space book. So yeah. I've I've used that in the title, but you don't want to use Chronicles because you had the Dalek Chronicles. So you know, I, it's I very hard something. coming yeah, up I'd... with new names for Doctor Who things as well because yeah. they've uh, all been done. I mean, yeah. it's... No joke. I mean, it's kind of like it, it's a it's almost a six year old television show, and people go try to be original. It's like I could have called it Escape to Danger. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have liked. I like that. I always. Oh, hold on, I'm pulling up this cool. Um, but you have some really great names in here, and I don't know. Um, but you know, there's some. Artists that I was surprised, happily surprised when I saw their names in, because I'm a huge um, fanboy to some of their work. Um, hold on. Uh, Andrew, as you mentioned. Yeah. Adrian Salomon. Adrian Salomon, yeah. Salomon? Yeah. 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 I've, oh. I've known Adrian for oh. a while. My, I think my one claim to fame is that at present, I've got the largest collection of original artwork by Adrian, but I keep me and me and there's a, a chap in Manchester called Gareth Kavanagh, and um, we sort of swap between us who's got the most at any one time. <laughs> God, it's I, uh, Conrad posts Adrian stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If he's I watching the Doctor Who episode, he'll he'll post one of Adrian's pictures yeah. for it. Yeah. I used to love that in, the, in Doctor Who magazine. I loved I it. Love Time Team. I love Cyberman. Uh, 
I, I just I, I love his work full stop, and he's <laughs> such a nice fella. <laughs> oh, I can imagine. Cause uh, hold on, where's the other name here? Trevor Bax- Baxendale, who I love his stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, he's, he's his story's player. cracking as well. I, Is it? I haven't gotten that far. Agent I'm going to wait, probably read the whole thing when I have it the, physically in my hands. You know, hands, the, I'm getting the one that you mentioned, Trevor Bra- Baxendale, the the story that he wrote, um, the chap who illustrated it's one of my oldest school friends, but um, one of... He, he is a professional graphic designer artist uh rob richardson and one of the things he did was when the fame musical all reformed a couple of years ago and went on tour he did all the posters and stuff for that so oh, that's cool yeah he's I mean, he's yeah. he's done so many things jeff will probably reckon it. did you ever watch clive anderson on channel yeah, yeah, four yeah. yeah they were a little cartoon clive he designed and made that so. you're joking no i'm not <laughs> and he's oh, just that's crazy. Yeah, he's just started drawing Judge Dread in 2000 AD as well. So. Oh, fantastic! Yeah, and Smuz, who's in the book as an illustrator, yeah. he he worked on 2000 AD as well. So yeah, I recognise his name. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, we've got yeah, Martin Garrity. Oh God, that's the other name. Yeah. I love his stuff. Yeah, I love his stuff. And when I saw he was working on the anim- doing the character models on the animated. Yeah. A lot of the animated Who's. And I was like, that's the perfect person. Yeah, and Adrian Salmon worked I... on them as well with the backgrounds. He, he did some direct. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the backgrounds are what I kind of always, you know, some people don't like the animated. Me and Jeff are both huge fans oh, yeah, of it. Yeah. But one of the best thing about it is the 3D modeling on the backgrounds they've done in these later ones that just make it sing. It... Um, you know, um, I was on another podcast and someone was going, well, the animation's at this. And I went, you're getting the animation that you can yeah. in two years. These are quickly made. Yeah. I mean, normally an animated film takes a decade. Oh, and the budgets are, are nothing like Disney. <laughs> you know, they're, they're, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, so, there's, um, there's a lot of extra work goes into them that is through love that, you know, wouldn't oh, yeah. get done. So, yeah. Well, and that's, and that's what I like about... Um, these fan projects because um before i did podcast and i was on our and i was running gallifrey's twitter feed i didn't know all these great artists that's how i met jeff was his art mm. me just complimenting his art because i same. love it so yeah, much same. yeah and so that you've got some of these people who are you know some of them are professional who people you know yeah. worked made money doing who stuff but still coming in to do these big fan projects. Because I think Who fans are great when it comes to the these kind of projects. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because they pop up every once in a while, and they're always made with such love. And this is amazing. Well, I mean, I, wh- one of the things that really flabbergasted me were when Nick Abadzis said that, yeah, I'd love to. And, you know, I mean, is, is an Eisner Award-winning comic writer, you know? I mean, yeah. you, you can't... You can't even imagine. I, I just cheeky and ask people, you know, the worst they can do is say no, and the amount that yeah. said yes. I mean, and it, like you say, it's a fabulous story. It brings yeah. brings so much sort of to the world. Yeah. Yeah, and them. it's. I mean, it's the perfect thing for any who who fan of either generation. You know, people who are primarily older, primarily modern. Uh, because the Zygons are a favorite. Yeah. It's because, I mean, one thing, Zygons is, in the original show, they only appeared once. Yes. But everybody remembers them, and everybody loved them. Yeah, because they scared everybody Um, silly. I I know, and I've never understood why they were never used a second time, other than having to build the costume again and again. Yeah. Yeah, I, but, I would uh, imagine they were expensive. What I did like about them was that I think they're probably one of the few aliens in Doctor Who that have got different faces for each yeah each <clears throat> character. Unless so, it was a half yeah, that's mask what, face, but for a full mask face, they're yeah. all unique. Um, yeah, oh. yeah, because they 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 just molded around their face and added. I mean, they just painted their face and then did all the other stuff around it it's it's a wonderful it's a great costume i think it's probably one of the best monster costumes they ever built 
because it would have been see, interesting ice to see warriors. them light up like they were supposed to do. But I don't know whether that oh. might have looked a bit silly. <laughs> it probably wow. would have, actually. Yeah. Probably would In 19... What was it? 76? Yeah. 77? 76, yeah. 76? Yeah. Good year. I can imagine. Year I was born. <laughs> I'll just All rub right. that in there. Whipper Sorry, snack. chaps. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Nah, no, you're not. Don't say don't. No, you're not. Nah, I'm not. <laughs> uh, uh, I keep realizing that I'm closer to 60 than I am to 55 now, and I'm just like, Ooh. I'm, I'm catching you. Oh, oh, it's all right. It's all in your head. <laughs> the bet that my hips tell me how old I am. My brain does not. So, um, so it took you four years to do it. Um, so. When, did you match the artist up with – did you choose which artist did which story? Yeah. Or were they – Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, because it's, a, it's an eclectic mix of art. Oh, I've, see, and that's what I like. That's my thing. I love art. I just love art. Um, I've got a very eclectic mix. I mean, if you look at the, the back cover, uh, that's Cole Hamilton, who um, is a gallery artist up in Scotland – and his style is completely different to anything else in the book. But then you've got Martin Simmons, who's like a, a top-rate comic artist, who, again, has got a different style. It's more scratchy and splashy. Um, so, you know, then you've got Jeff Wee's photography. Um, and, yeah, the, Adrian Salmon does the more angular work. Um, so, yeah, there's... I don't think there's any two artists that look the same in the book, which I love that. I love the variety. But then there's no yeah. two stories that read the same either. So I've gone for a, a good mix, I hope, of writers as well. So oh, yeah, some, yeah, yeah, yeah. some is really detailed that you might have to read it three or four times to get everything out of it. I know I read um, Seb Short's story i read it about three times and it took me that long to actually realize what was happening in one part and i'm like why why didn't i spot that straight away so you know <laughs> but then there's others that are really straightforward so there's something for everybody in it i hope yeah i mean i liked i i got about like i said about a quarter way yeah. through um, and then when I, I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to be a good fan and, uh, purchase a copy because it's for charity. And I think everybody should, uh, these projects are, I love these kind of projects where, um, you know, it's going to raise a small amount of money, but it's going to, all that money can affect, yeah. you know, I work, I work at a hospital and we have a big, um, a place, one of our expertise is cancer. Yeah. It's, we have a place called the Dalton Clinic or the Massey Cancer Center where they do studies and yeah. uh, do grant work. Uh, and so any every little penny counts. Well, it's and and also getting the word out. And that's that's something good about fandom in all fandom. I think is I think fans are really good about giving back. Well, it's funny you should say that because um, I'm I'm involved with some other the unofficial annuals which their editor mark wargan he's this book would not have happened without his technical expertise on lulu but um he we we managed to get uh, colin baker to write a forward and um he said that when he became the doctor it coincided with his child dying from cot death and even before it appeared as the Doctor on telly, the Doctor Who fans had um, sent money to, as it was then, the Lullaby Trust, I think. And um, the the money that were raised, you say it, it's a small amount, but since he was the Doctor and the, the amount of cot deaths in this country have been reduced from some... I, I forget the figures exactly, but it's from, like, 200 down to 60. So, you know, it, every little can difference. help. And, you know, yeah. it, it, it's just amazing. Yeah, I remember when that happened, mm. you know, and we were hearing about it in Doctor Who magazine. You know, I heard about it in America. Yeah. 
you know, I mean, but it was pre-internet, so yeah. it was so what I heard about it months later. But you knew about that, yeah. you know, and you knew about the fans' reaction. And there have been other ones over the over the last few years. Uh, I think lockdown helped, gave people creative out outlet. I wouldn't know about that. Um, I would work. <laughs> so was I. So was I. Was, Part know. of the drive for me with this project was I've had cancer, yeah. and for the last two years, my wife's been going through cancer and the treatment and all of that, <laughs> um, which is why I, re- I really want this to do well because it, it, yeah. it's important. And like you said earlier on, you either know someone who has or we're all we're all affected by cancer at some point in our lives yeah. all of us I, um and it's it's this horrible disease and it comes in many forms and it, it affects everybody yeah. so it, it's it's a good cause and in Eng- okay this this charity because in you know in america a charity is a dime a dozen yeah. I, mean, I don't mean that in a bad way it's just we're a very large com- country yeah. with um uh and we have cancer foundations for every kind of cancer yeah, you know, yeah. individual. But this is a general cancer fund. Uh, I think it's it's the main one. So there are it's the main one. Okay. There are um, charities that deal with um, specific cancers. There is Macmillan, which provide nurses mm-hmm. to care for people. Uh, they provide oh, other that's... support as well, uh, um, helping with finances and what grants are available. Yeah, they helped us. They helped us yeah. when Nicola um, had to cut, go off work sick, basically. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Macmillan were great for that. Yeah, yeah. Um, See, we have we have stuff like that, but in this country, everything's run driven by insurance. Like I have to, I put that. We 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 in this country, we kind of have to do it on our own, but we do have charities. Mm. And we have, and then, and the hospital I work at, because it's a teaching hospital, it does a lot of stuff pro bono for indigent care. Yeah. Because we don't have the, you know, we don't have the natural, we don't have the wonderful NHS. We have. I'm not sure how much longer we're going to have it either, to be honest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When, if they try to take it away, that is definitely a pitch pork pitchfork and torches kind of afternoon gentlemen yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just, uh as someone is the model they want to give you as someone who works in it don't mm. Mm, no no it's bad um so paul um now that you're close to putting this out are you breathing a sigh of relief are you or <coughs> you still got um it's, <laughs> new daddy syndrome it's funny um i i am um... I don't do proud. I've done book covers, things like that, and I look at them and think, yeah, that's all right. I don't do proud, but I am proud of this. Um, I am. I sure do right. think it's the best that I, as if you want to call me editor or compiler, whatever, it's the best I could have done. Um, I, I'm sort of torn. I don't know whether I want somebody else to come along and if if it's popular book and people like it, which I hope it is, uh, I'd, I'd quite like somebody to come along as a different showrunner, if you like, and take it forward to the next stage. Because it, it, it finishes like it closes act one of mm-hmm. the story. Um, and I'm sort of torn. I would love somebody to like it that much that they decided they wanted to do the second part. And, you know, I, I'd love that. Uh, but I uh, I have also started having ideas for a part two. <laughs> I'm like, no oh, rest for the away. wicked, Paul. Step away. <laughs> uh, I, th- I think all people who do some form of art are like that. I know when I was I directed a play and the director has to walk away. Yeah. You know, once it starts, it's the stage manager. Yeah. And uh, you know, um, and I don't and I get that don't do proud thing. Yeah. It's like, nah, I did my job. I did yeah. what I was supposed. You know. Yeah. You know, but I was raised by a Scot. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I would like to see what happens next. But like I say, I, I would quite like for somebody else to take that role on, and um, I can then look at it as a fan. Which uh, yeah. you know, yeah. I, I've I've been that invested in it, and I know it inside out. It it sort of it becomes something different to you. 
I've got to say, when I first picked the book up when it arrived, even the there's probably 30 or 40 things I've had to tweak, which is why I got the, this version. Um, it still feels really nice to pick it up as a physical thing. Um, yeah, I, I, I am proud of it. So I mean, I, we've I been talking on and off for like the last four years yeah. about this. Uh, and we've been messaging and chatting and I've contributed and you've shown me little sneak peeks of it and stuff. Yeah. Um, and it's been such a part of your life for four years. Yeah. It, yeah. Yeah. To then it's sort like of a go, baby. Right, I'll finish that now. <laughs> yeah. What yeah. next? Well, <laughs> I, have, I have got a couple Put of plans on. for what's next, but um, along like I did with this, I'm saying nothing just yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. I think this is going to be a big hit. Um, I think it deserves to be because. This, yeah. It does. It does. It looks absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. Oh, I'm glad you it like does. it. Yeah. Plus, I noticed, oh, Paul, that yeah. you kept yourself out of mentioning some of the beautiful art in there, and I won't let you sell yourself short here, because you do. <laughs> but it's, it's your art just, is stunning. It, well, it's not about me. It's about the it's book not about, and no. the contributors. And ev- like I say, everybody's brought something to it, and everything has cross-fertilised with everything else. So, you yeah. know... No one person could say that's my idea because it, it's just cross fertilized all the way through. So. Yeah, it's like when we first talked about me contributing something, and I was a bit, mm, I'm, I'm not a writer. Yeah, but per you are. Se. But you are. <laughs> yeah. What what you bring to it is emotion, which a lot of people write an adventure story, or they'll write a science fiction story, but you write a story that's got characters and that's important because if you don't feel for the characters then it could just it might as well be anything the first thing that popped into my head when you asked me was well the zygons have to be people yeah If, if this is a zygon annual celebrating the zygons they have to be people and they're just people at the end of the day and that's kind of what i tried to do with my characters a little bit um they're grotesque sort of exaggerations of yeah. people but they're people yeah. um and that I, well a good story is always good if you have empathy for the character yeah. you don't have to you know what i mean yeah you have to understand <laughs> yeah. that they're a person and that they're motivated they like they're no villains in it there are no villains yeah, well, that's, the villain that doesn't was, know they're a villain something that i were really keen for that the zygons um <clears throat> I, I also said that they're not all shape changers so only the military have the shape changing ability and that meant then that you you wouldn't have 20 of the same story where they go in disguised do something and then disappear again um and by doing that you've got two separate groups you've got the military but then you've got the general population where you can do something different to what's been seen and i think that is really important and it's something that doctor who does shy away from it it just shows the military aspect and you can't have a race that's purely military yeah. apart from some tyrants well, or whatever but you, yeah. you need to have the other side of it i mean steve hatcher um he's written a really nice story about um a, a zygon is, that falls to earth you know and it's a really nice character piece um, the artist that I chose for that is my friend Jenny, and she she doesn't even like Doctor Who, but she draws really nice portraits. And so I asked her if she'd contribute, and she she did some really nice portraits that really go with Steve's story. And it, it hasn't got a zygon in it in the illustration, but it just works. is that the one with the blue? It's in the blue. Yeah, that's the, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's lovely. Oh God, those are stunning. Yeah. It's a stunning piece. I didn't even read it. I just I I got to the point where I'm not gonna be able to read it, but I'm gonna salivate yeah, over all yeah. the artwork because you know I mean that's kind of the joy of those of a real annuals. You guys, when you get them, did you kind of go through them when you were kids and get them and just kind of look? Oh yeah. 
yeah, 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 yeah. You speed through it and then you read yeah. it. I mean, the Tom Baker now is just staring at certain images and stuff, especially the Tom Baker ones, because they went yeah. weird. <laughs> when Paul Crompton, <laughs> oh man, the Sinister Sponge and all that, fabulous. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I got. Um, um, so, um, no, I did notice is, actually. They're, they're, what is it? It's 193 pages. Yeah, and I think. 190. Yeah. And then I think there's only, I think there's less than 40 pages without an image on them that are just text. That's remarkable. Yeah. That's a lot. Yeah. That but that wouldn't happen in something being put together by a publisher. Oh, you, could, you couldn't afford to do these nowadays. If you look at no. the official annuals, it's all photographs and puzzles. Yeah. They can't they, they 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 can't afford with the amount that's sold now to to employ people to do it. The, the, it it would just cost too much. So this is the only outlet now is yeah. fan publications. And I think that's it, true. It is. And that's not to say that this won't appeal. This will only appeal to people of a certain generation, the people that grew up with the annuals, yeah. because. It's very modern looking as well, but oh, in that well, lovely yeah. retro way. Yeah. So yeah. This, yeah. this 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 is a must for everyone. I, I would as, say. Uh, well, well, I know. So the Zygons are are popular with new Who fans yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because I think when uh, then they brought them back, that they did it mostly right. I just don't like yeah. the design. What's with the, uh, the sausages on the chest, you know? And they lost. Oh yeah, they yeah. Lost the big dome. They yeah. lost the big dome off the front of the heads. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They look a bit too flat. Yeah. But. That's true. I never thought about. It. But you know, but but people went. But it's also the the original one is still a popular one story. And when someone goes back and is discovering old hoop for the first time, they had the same reaction I did when I first saw it. It's my favourite you know? Doctor Who story. Oh, I, yeah. I'm, I'm not yeah. saying that just because we're talking about Zygons. I've, I've said it oh, for no, years. No. I have a lot of comfort Who stories, but Terror yeah. of the Zygons, I think, is probably the best example of that four-episode Monster of the Week it were, it, story. I can't no, argue with that. I think it is, too. And it's got the brick in no, it. No, so. because... It has the brig and everybody gets it. Everybody has something to do. There's no fluff. There's no filler. It's a good TARDIS team with the Brig and Benton in it. Plus, I love John Woodnut as well. Yeah. I love John Oh, God. I, I, oh, my God. He's so good. He's so good in it. And he plays three parts yeah. in that story. Because you've got, you've got I know. Broton Duke, you've got Broton, and then you've got the Duke. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And all of them are different. It's really good. Yeah. yeah he's, yeah. he's great. I love him. <laughs> and he's the Emperor of Draconia. <laughs> and isn't he in uh isn't he a Vogon too? No, 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 he's no. not a Vogon. Oh, no, he's in okay. Spearhead from Space as well. Oh, and he's also in is he in Trocken? Yes. Yeah. He's um the the, the nice consul, isn't he? he? Yeah. Fairly rapidly meets a grizzly end. <laughs> Yeah, well. um, you can't you can't beat a story that's got Shuey McPhee in it. That's what I say. Well, yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> He's like, who's Shuey McPhee? <laughs> right. Well, well, Paul, I've I've got one last question, and I normally ask it at the beginning of any uh, Runcible or Gallifrey's Most Wanted when we have a guest. Is uh, this one? Uh, how did you become a Doctor Who fan? I love these stories. I well, I've. You know, I've always been a Doctor Who fan as long as I can remember. One of my earliest memories, uh, I've got, I've got a few actually, but the mummies getting the foot caught in the traps in Pyramids of Mars in the woods when they're chasing, when the Doctor, no, they're chasing Sarah, aren't they? And yeah. I was yeah. terrified to go in the local woods after that. I, I couldn't do it. They were the Ark in space. I saw that on my next door neighbour's telly in colour, because we had a black and white at the time, black and white rental, and I saw it on their colour telly, and to get back to our house, I had to climb over a fence where there were a bush, and I would have been about four at the time, 
and I was absolutely terrified. It was the one where the Wirren were in the solar stacks. Yeah, yeah. that was my very first Doctor Who story. Wow. That was the first Doctor Who story I saw. Um, I saw it at, uh, when I was like 13. Yeah, and then the other one is when Sarah's been terrorized by the crinoid. Uh, but I, I, even in my head now, even though I've seen it on video and DVD and, you know, on Britbox and everything, it's always in black and white in my head. Always. Where, really? where she's tied to, and they're going to set the bomb off. Yeah, it's always yeah. in my head. But I've always. I'm that out. way with. I'm that way with original Star Trek because we didn't have a color TV until like 73, 74. So I'd had like a couple years of everything was black and white. And the first time I saw it in living color on our, it was like, oh, wow. (laughs) My brother was just like, and my brothers were like that. I would have been like nine and my oldest brother who's the one that turned me into a nerd. Um, uh, We were all like there seeing it in color for the first time. So... I love a I love a good first Doctor Who story or good yeah. ner you know any kind of fandom. Oh, um, yeah, I've, I've always because there's something it. about fandom that builds community. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, and in a good way. I mean, we see with social media a lot of the negative effect of yeah. Sometimes, um, which is really funny as, because uh, I I'm, I'm I'm in a couple of groups, one in Manchester, one in Derby and one in Nottingham and I've never met a negative fan in them groups uh, but when you go on Twitter or Facebook or whatever it's negativity 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 and I, where are they coming from because I don't see them in real life I know I don't get it. I mean, it's I'm a I'm uh, big on block and I, I'm very fortunate. I don't get a lot of negatives on our post because I'm so I'm using the algorithm to my benefit. <laughs> it, even even a hint that you're going to say something prejudice, prejudiced or hateful or mean, because you can some people you can see it coming because you can see the setup. <clears throat> they ask a question in a certain manner, and I'm like, eh, you're going to go dick. Well, what <laughs> in a second. A lot of it to me seems to be older fans. It is. Towards the I, new I, fans. I, yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. get it. <clears throat> um, it I winds was me talking up. to me. It winds me up because yeah. I'm an 80s kid, I still consider myself a new fan. Yeah. And that's kind of how I was made to feel for a long time. Um, and I, oh, yeah. I mean, what was it? Um, this On Facebook, just after Jody was cast, and I, I put one of my pictures up as my banner on, on yeah. Facebook. Um, and someone went, how long have you been a fan? And I went, 38 years at the time, or whatever it was, 37 years. Uh, and he went, huh, well, I've been a fan for 40 years, and you sound like a newbie. I was like, I'll get flipped. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. See how I well, said myself, been... though? That was very good, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. Very good, very good. But I don't. I'm the foul mouth American. What's, what's the um, but me and Vic were talking about... We're, we're talking about it, and it's. I have to say that when I was, you know, gatekeeping was is was is. I worked in a comic shop, and the comic shop yeah. guy in The Simpsons is not wrong. No. It's not. <laughs> it's an exaggeration, but it's not wrong. Isn't his name but Jeff? I had. Sure his name is Jeff. <laughs> comic book guy's real name is Jeff. <laughs> oh my God! But it is gatekeeping was taught to fans in some ways. Um, and unless you had someone call you on it, and I, as I got older and I wanted to turn people onto things, I realized like some of my behavior might have been a little gatekeeping, and I fight it, you know. I've been there. I think I've it's, been there, yeah. I, you know, uh, there are times where someone, you know, I don't think they get it, but now I'm very much of just tell me what you're seeing. I'm interested in how you're you're in how you're absorbing this art form. Mm. You know, these storytellings, because that's what I, I realized that I'm all my nerd stuff interconnects comics, Star Trek, Doctor Who, yeah. uh, Philip K. I'm a big Philip O.K. Uh, Philip Jose Farmer. He writes science fiction novels who did. He's been dead for 30 years now, but um, uh, he'd be 100. Um, but it all is interconnected. It's just storytelling. I just want to tell me a story. So uh, I'm, you know, I've always been a bit weird even in doctor who because i always seem to like the stories that everybody else says is rubbish <laughs> so 
I'll, I'll love Creature from the Pit. I'll love Horns and I'm on. <laughs> I'll love um, Nightmare on You Easter. listen to our season 17 review? Oh, I loved it. I, I listened to it and you were wrong. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but no, I mean, yeah, I, 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 I love I just love the stories. I don't care what they look like on screen so much. No. But um, I your mind fills that, in yeah. the blanks as well. Yeah. You can. You, yes. If, yeah. Certainly, if you if you've got a visual mind, I think it's probably easier for people yeah. who who have worked with arts or in yeah. the arts or are artists. Yeah, yeah. It's easier to fill in the void spaces and and see the intent yeah. behind yes. the design or the production. See, that, what got me from doing it for so many years with no money in a small theater company is like I know how hard it is. Yeah. <clears throat> if what I did was hard, what they're doing is ten thousand times harder and i hate a fan that goes god look how lazy that was and i'm like going you would cry if they if someone made you work that hard you had 80p 40 minutes and the lights were going out you've got to get someone on screen yeah. oh that's how we how i convinced uh victor my, my vic who does gallifrey's most yeah. wanted she, I mean, it was showing her the original pilot and then telling her, showing her that she wants the pilot. And then I showed her the making of documentary on In the Beginning. And she went, they did that for 2,000 pounds? <laughs> and she did the math. And she went, I said, I told you, it's Commando Theater. Yeah. This is down dirty and fast. This is a 25-minute play shot over 50 minutes with no cutting. Yeah. It's live. And she, she never realized that, you know, how hard it, you know, how... Well, not primitive, but well, TV they were, were using the three cameras. Theatre, weren't it, at the time? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, oh, you yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you could edit, but it cost a lot of money. So. But, yeah, it was just, it's the down and dirty. And even today, even, I mean, we see Modern Who, which is done on a much higher budget. It's still nothing compared to American tele produced television. No. You know, I watch Kurtzman Tech, Trek. One episode of that probably cost more than four episodes a who and who looks good in, i mean i think modern who has looked good yeah oh yeah it's never looked bad it's never looked shoddy and it just gets better and i want to see what you know in the next batch of money going you know they're gonna what the next iteration is going to be what are they going to throw at yeah. it because everybody throws something new <clears throat> at it yeah you know yeah so still we've got sea well, devils folks, to go first yeah. Oh God, that looks so it good. Does. Yeah. It does. It does. It does a sea devil talk for I'm fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, like, yeah. it's in the um, the trailer, isn't it? Talking that people are complaining yeah. about that now, aren't they? So. Whatever, man. Yeah. It's a sea. It, do, it, does, it does look like. It, the... Probably, Sounds but terrible. I mean, oh, God. whatever. It, we're only got 40 minutes. I think they do it. Nigel Farage's voice for it because he looks just like Nigel Farage. <laughs> yeah, fucking really. <laughs> <laughs> Someone put a picture of them side by side and I went, oh, that's, ins that's insulting that makeup artist, man. Sea Devil with a pint of beer and a cigar. Hmm. Oh, but then the free blunder thing. Huh? Sea Devils. Were they another Freelander yeah. mask? Yeah, they, they were, were, weren't they? Same as the Zygons. Yeah, and yeah. Davros, yeah. And Davros, yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, you, I, that, you guys all have that in your head. I have the cat, you know, I have <laughs> comic artists in my brain. There's just only so much bandwidth. Uh, Paul, I want to thank you for joining us and uh, letting us uh, be the first to talk about this amazing product. Yeah. Uh, project, not product, project. Um. But Paul, thank you so much for coming on. Yes, I appreciate you. it. Um, yeah. Um, and thanks all for having success me in the, in the book world as with well. this. <laughs> yeah. Yes, everybody. Everybody needs to get get it because one, it's an incredibly good char uh, charity, and it's it needs your help. And it's a beautiful book. And Jeff's in it. Yeah. There you go. So, Don't let that right. put you off so, though. <laughs> it, no, it's you, you're one of the. I think there's you and. Two others that have written and illustrated their own story. Mm. Wow. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Well, well. Elite. <laughs> oh, definitely. <laughs> so, hey, Jeff, before before I give our um our say our, give our tag out, I'd like you to do you want to give the where they can get the book 
um, uh, and also please send me the link uh, when you are ready to put them on sale and I will share it uh, tag it to the episode again yeah um, but I mean, yeah why don't you let us know where they can get it if you're planning but, to go live Friday or by the end of the week then this yeah. will, this will be there's, Perfect there's a Twitter page uh, at Zygon Diaries, so right. people can go on there and it'll be posted on that. All right, then I'm a, I will put that tag at Zygon Diaries in when I post this. Excellent. Um, and and then when you make the announcement and it starts popping up, we will I will share it on all our feeds. Oh, I'm gonna spam um, the hell out. Are gonna oh yeah, hate me. you're gonna think I'm a Russian bot. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks. Well, that's uh, this Runcible report for you. There will be another. We're gonna do two. Jeff, I'd so you know this. Uh, Vic is on vacation, so at some point uh, late this week or early next week, I need we need to fill a, a slot. So um, I like the forewarn in there. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that, brother. No, no, no. Uh, we got some stuff time. we never to, we Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just tell you give me a date and it's we'll set it up. Um but folks, that's that's it for us. Again, thank you, Paul. You can find us, uh the the wonderful dulcet tones of me and Jeff at Runcible Report. Um we have another episode coming up. We're gonna do another season. We're gonna let you pick it in the Vic will be back uh in two in three weeks. She's got a little break. Uh, you can find us at Gallifrey's MW Pod on the Twitter feed or at Runcible Report. Um, and folks, and until then, we look forward to seeing you somewhere in time or space. <laughs>